Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about like the consequences, basically the positive and negative of fast education in Nigeria. So for context, um, I think the federal government in Nigeria issued like a, a ban or something that um, students cannot write common entrance at 11 years old. And I've posted about how I wrote mine when I was eight years old and basically I made a short thread and a lot of people have just been leaving comments on that. I probably leave screenshots um, around. So I'm going to make a video to talk about that in detail, basically from my lived experience. And so for context, I read Common Insurance when I was eight years old. I was in primary four at that time. And for people that are not Nigerians on my channel. So in Nigeria, we have um, a six three, three, four education based system, six years in primary school, three years in junior secondary school, three years in senior secondary school and four years in the university. So I was in year four of like the first um, of primary school, basically. And I recommend entrance in primary four. So I recommend entrance in primary four because like my brother was in primary five or primary six as I did and he was writing. And I think my folks were just like, you know, why not try? Because I was also like a very book smart student when I was in primary school. So I wrote it and I passed. I started secondary school when I was about nine. I started university when I was about 15. And I graduated university the year I was supposed to turn 19. So I graduated when I was still 18 years old. And, oh, child. So first of all, because when I did primary four, from primary four to GSS one, it was the same school. They had like a primary and like a secondary school area. So when I moved into GSS one, people already had friends from primary school that were in their class. So... I sort of did not have any friend and I was sort of alone until I started making friends with my seat mates and then we had our little group and that was cute. So in just as one, I just inter struggled with making friends, which I did. And uh, there were also some people that felt like I did not belong in the class because I did not, I skipped two years basically. But when I now went to just as two, now then I started boarding school, it was hell, it was crazy. I didn't know the funniest part. The funniest part is I was the one that convinced my parents to let us go to boarding school. I remember my two older brothers being so angry at me, but like the idea of boarding school just excited me. I didn't know why, it just did. And I remember the first day of boarding school, I cried because I think my sidey was the head girl. And I think that I was talking during siesta while I was not sleeping, something, but I was punished for some flimsy reason and I cried. And that was where, like, the hell started from that place. It was horrible. Like, it was obvious that I was naive, so it was easy for people to take advantage of me. I really did not understand a lot of things. Like, no, that school was just crazy. And that was even the school that someone lied, that I did something that I did not do, and they ended up stretching me in front of, like, the table, and people would lay me down, and they flunked me. And I was trying to defend myself, but it felt like nobody was listening to me. And now that I think back, I don't even know if I was defending myself properly. But these are memories that I've buried and I'm not trying to bring them back. But yeah, I did not have any sense of self. Like, I didn't know who I was. Because I mean, I was a child. <laughs> I didn't know who I was. I was a child. So I really struggled. And then from there, we went to another boarding school, and this time we moved states, because my first two schools were in Benin City. Um, so we moved states to Kaduna, and I was in like SS2 in Kaduna. And SS2 was, that was also another crazy period, because while I initially struggled in the first school, I started getting used to it. So leaving to go to another school when I was just starting, get, when I was just like getting used to the other one was a bit of a struggle for me, um, to be honest. And that one was different because there were much older people in my class. And the setting I was initially was everyone was mixed in the hostels, but this one was just like you and your classmates um, in one hostel because the population of this school was much higher than the population of my um, other school. So you would think that this school I did SS2 was Imperial School, um, Kudenda. You would think that because it's just your mates in the same hostel, it would be better. It was another version of, hey, another version of suffering. I was bullied um, in that school so bad. And I remember my birthday because, you know, in boarding schools, we have like this ritual of of um, punishing people or like basing them on their birthdays. But mine was like pro max, even like outside of my birthday. It was just terrible. Like 
the fact that I did not know myself, the fact that I was with all these people that have had much experience, like much more experience in life than I have, or like much older than I was. So it was just like crazy adjusting. So I would say like one of the first things that, one of the first negative effects of fast education is just being thrown into the world at such a young age because um people i don't know i think parents generally shiny nigerian parents do not really have an idea of what the education education system is is was for us and like is right now um they, they are not aware that children are nasty people and children are not nice so if they feel that if they if they can if they know that you're naive they will take advantage of that they will capitalize on that and also my education, my education suffered because when I was in primary school, <clears throat> I was very, very like book smart student in primary, in secondary school as well. I was um, a book smart student, but as I progressed, my, my, my attention span, me paying attention to my books, everything, my grades, everything started dropping because I started having all these other problems that were just affecting me with life, like. I stopped my I stopped going to when I was in I stopped going to classes at one point. There was a time I was in my hostel for like two weeks because I was sort of just scared of existing because like I'll be bullied, I would be picked on. And as I then it felt like I was defending myself, but I was probably not defending myself efficiently because like I didn't know when I was in my house, in my father's house, I didn't have to defend myself against anybody. So yeah, that was that was very crazy and also like the type of loneliness that comes from feeling like no one understands you and type of the type of loneliness that feels that comes when no one understands you because at the end of the day like oh when well, when i tell people oh, like yeah i'm 13 years old but i mean it says two they'll be like oh my god you know you're so smart you're so this you're so that you're so that, that. so people are seeing like the positive aspects of it which i'm not gonna lie is there uh, but still, it's like, am I going to start explaining to people that, oh, excuse me, because of this, that, that, that. And the worst part is, when I was in those classes, when I was when I was much younger, I didn't understand that my age was one of the things affecting me. I thought it was me. I thought something was wrong with me. So, like, I mean, now now that I'm older, looking at it, I can tell that, oh, it's because I was young. That's why this, that's, that's why people were able to do those things. And because, I mean, people are just horrible. But then I internalized all these things thinking, oh, my God, um, I'm not doing things right. It's something I'm doing. It's how I am, which then affected my sense of self, which was already in the gutter because, like, um, I, 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 I was not a slow, what's, what's the word? Um, I don't know why you blossom when you're... I don't remember the word. Um, this is when you grow into yourself at a much later age. So I was not that person. I was just young. But I felt like it. And like people would mock my body because I was very slim and very, I was a very slim child. So it's like my mates are like, you know, having boobs and ass and I'm there with like my nipples on my chest and whatever. Like people are saying things like, oh, why is your ass flat? Why is your this, that? And I was a child. <laughs> like, what did you expect from a child that was growing at a, I guess, normal rate? So my self-esteem as well, and I had a lot of acne, which I sort of still do, um, which was normal for my age as well. But being exposed to people that have probably gone through that and over and overcome that, um, it's just it's just it just it just made it crazy. And when I got into university, I would say uni, I had a better experience in uni than I did in secondary school. I'm so happy I went to like a private uni. Um, if I'd gone to a public one, I feel like I would have, I would have struggled more. So I go into like uni at 15. Well, the uni one was tricky because I wanted, my mom, my mom wanted me to go to nursing school. So I was supposed to go to nursing school and nursing school, you had to be a certain age. And I, I, I think 18 or 17. And I was not that age, so it was like, oh, I was going to spend a year at home. And I was so sad because then I graduated second school with my brother, and I was like, oh, my God, no, we should go to uni together, uh, ETC, ETC. But then my godfather was able to convince my parents on my behalf for me to study microbiology <laughs> in the university. So, yeah, um, that happened. So uni, I would say, was just a place that I sort of went, I won't say wild, 
Because then that's one thing I'm grateful for is that all through these struggles, all through growing, I did not like come to a point where I completely lost myself. I mean, I did, but like not in a way that would ha- that had like consequences that I could not take back. I didn't like go out of my way to sort of do anything overly crazy. And also the fact that I was from a deeper life home. So <laughs> going to uni just felt like, oh my God, yeah, this is freedom. I can finally be myself. I remember me dressing crazy. People that went to university with me, they know, they know that some guests are probably going to be wearing something crazy to class for lectures or whatever. Just because like, I had so much in me that I wanted to express so much to just let go. I just I just felt like, oh, I could finally breathe. I could become a uni. I was an MC. I was a, I was in the choir for a while. I was a dancer. I was in um I was in the debating club. I was the second best British BP debate. <laughs> I was a, I, I, I was in the debating club. I was second best debater in school. Um, what did I not do? I was a, I was a stylist. I was a model. I was a creative director. I was acting. Oh my god, that was what gave me the most joy in school. I was acting. I used to act stage plays in school, and you know, I like to say I was one of the best as of when I was there. I mean, it was said by people in that department. So, so I was doing tons of things, and this was also combined with my microbiology degree. I mean, it's so obviously my 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 degree, my education suffered, but university was such an amazing experience for me to like come into myself and find myself. Because I was when I was figuring out, oh, I don't even like microbiology. I don't even like what I'm actually studying. And then at the point where I came to that realization, I was in my third year, and I wanted to switch to mass comm. But then private schools, private uni um, fees are very expensive. Although my dad did say if I want to switch, yeah, I can switch, like basically would cover. But I would have I would have had to go to I'll have had to write YAC again. And I was just like, yeah, I have two more years. Let me just go and I'll do what I want to do. Um so it was in uni that I started blogging, I started creating content, and basically that's a career that has just been growing to where I am now, you know, working in marketing um in my Nigeria role so it's so basically it's been like a mix of bad a lot of bad from secondary school and then university was better and I would say things contributed to the experience because obviously in secondary school it was mostly like I there were a lot of nasty people um in, that I came across in secondary school which contributed to making these experiences very terrible for me and while in uni because my school was still relatively new, our set was the second year in uni. There was a lot more like, hmm, I don't know if I would say freedom. And also I think there were, I know there was, I had a classmate that was my age mate as well. Um, and yeah, it was just better because people in my, in the uni was, they were just, I don't know. I guess it was just better than people in my secondary school. Especially also because the secondary school I went to that I struggled the most in Peria was was um praised as one of the best private schools in Kaduna, but it was actually not. The outside of the school, everything looks nice, but once you actually get into the system, it's a fucking ghetto. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> so I would say while my experiences with life sort of started getting better, I also like started working in uni, and I think I was like seventeen, which I really did not have to, <laughs> but I just wanted to. And that made me start being responsible at a younger age. And I think another reason why I did was because of the course that I was studying, which also takes me back to why, like the age thing. If you're 15 years old, there's no way you would, I mean, some people would know, I guess, but it's like, you can't be 100% certain that the course that you're studying is actually what you're crazy about in life. Especially if like you were born and you've lived in a country like Nigeria, where you don't really have, well, I say, um, the world is not like I think I mean also time has changed from then to now I think now even in uni you know like you know, the options you can have in the world but as I then it felt like options were still somewhat limited because I mean remote working and everything and the, like the creator um, career everything has sort of progressed over the years um, so yeah at that age I was not sure who I wanted to be uh, you know I just I just did what I thought I think the cause I thought was best for me. Um, another thing I would I would say is with relationships. Um, so with my friendships in university, I was I was luck I was I was lucky with those. You know, I met I met amazing people, but like my relationship with like 
my um romantic relationships i would say they suffered because then um let's see god there was even someone that that was moving to me and lied about his age he was way older than me like about 10 years older than me and lied that it was just like think about three four years older than me and then was trying to milk me for money see <laughs> trying to uh, but i mean i didn't fall for that because to an extent i was smart um but i would say yeah my friendships in uni really 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 helped um i think being complete completely being able to completely be myself with people um sort of helped so i would say like people helped but in general i'm not going to advise anybody to like start school so early um but yeah let me talk about the positive the positive aspect is that it sets you up like when I was living in school and I was like, oh, I'm not going to work with this microbiology degree that I have. There was there, there's just always this confidence that I had at the back at the back of my mind that, yeah, I still have time to do anything I want to do. You know, um, although realistically, I was not like very confident in that because I mean, at the end of the day, it's Nigeria and it's not like I, I have unlimited money coming from somewhere. Um, but yeah, there's just that confidence that, okay, you have time to do things. Another thing is, I won't say it sort of opened doors for me, but in a way, it did. People were more impressed by me when I spoke and when I introduced myself that, oh, oh my God. Because like after NYC, I immediately started working and I think I got my first role in management when I was 22. So when I tell people, oh, I'm working as business development manager and social media executive for this company, they'll be like, oh my God, at your age, you're very, you're, that's so amazing. I remember when I wanted to work as a social media manager for a real estate company when I was speaking with the CEO. I mean, yeah, I was already impressed in my CV with everything. So one day, when I eventually noted them my age and it was like, oh, wow, you're the youngest person sitting at my office, you know, being able to have this type of conversation with me. So yeah. Um, it did make me grow fast, uh, grow fast, but then it also made me have this like a level of confidence or like this, oh, oh my God, I'm so grown. I'm so mature point of view that, yeah, was true, but was actually not true. I mean, because like now that I'm 24, I know more than I did when I was younger, but then the way I thought I knew when I was younger, you could not tell me shit. I was very mature. I was very did. <laughs> I was very dad's but. I really wasn't and I could see how like the men that were coming to me at that point especially like older men wanted were trying to capitalize on the fact that oh I already think I'm mature so it's like oh yeah yeah very mature I blah, blah, blah. oh whining whining well anyways um yeah so that but then the negative effects of that is when I was 23 when I was like becoming 23 and stuff, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, 23 is a normal age for you to be working and be done with school. So now I'm like every normal person. And like, there's nothing wrong with being every normal person. But when when your age has been like hyped all through your life and you're getting to the point where, oh, if I say, oh, I'm this person, I'm, I'm getting my master's and I'm 24. It's like, yeah, people have their master's when they're 24, when they're 23, when they're 22. You're no longer special. So I had that that period where I was just absolutely like, I won't say going insane. It felt like I was having a midlife crisis because I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't feel special then because I, I, every things like the age has now been so overhyped that I've forgotten like the person, like me, me, the person doing like me, myself, I'm, I'm like, I'm the powerhouse regardless of my age. Um, and yeah, and basically you're able to pursue opportunities faster. For example, now I would say, let's use immigration as an example. I would not have a problem immigrating because um, for my age, I have had this much experience at work. I have about six years ex of experience at work. Um, so it's like, it's a good thing in terms of like career progression and ETC. It's a good thing um, when you have fast education, which I'm not going to lie about. So it was also, I'm in spaces where Sometimes people my age might not be in. However, every other thing that comes from from those hard lessons in your formative years when you're struggling to just, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. But then also it's like money is like the single language that's everywhere. Everybody in the world understands. And 
obviously having an edge can put you in that place but at what cost though because there was also someone I knew that was even a year younger than me and was in a, was a class ahead of me and she struggled so much I think she had to drop out of school uh, when we as adults are talking about like the trauma we've had to experience everybody sort of relates back to childhood trauma so I really don't know if it's so important enough or if it's like a risk worth taking if you're saying like oh my god rush your education rush your education because out of this um everything will move fast for you i feel like generally the world is just becoming faster and faster and faster but it's like um let kids be kids and i'm gonna say like i have no ill thoughts towards my parents for um fast tracking my education at that time they didn't want they thought was best but like I have a younger brother right now and his education is going normally as it should because obviously I, sh I shared my experiences with them much later on. I think also it would have helped if I shared my experiences with them while I was going through it. But um, I didn't. Um, and this, and I think also because of the type of relationship we had there, our, my relationship with my folks, it, it's much better now. Um. So yeah. Um, I didn't want to do this like in the pros and the cons way because I just wanted to share my story so you can have that like um, picture of everything that happened. So left to me, I do not believe like people's education should be fast tracked. Um, but that's also because of my lived experiences. And to be honest, majority of the responses of everybody talking, majority of people that I've had fast track education I've said like you know if they can go back they would not want to experience that I mean but I've come to the place of acceptance with my life like this is the only life I have if I'm supposed to do this life again I don't know if I want to come back um so I'm happy with where I am right now but also I just had to learn a lot of painful lessons and most of my I have most of my childhood memories be like painful memories from secondary school um, because I did not have a sense of self because I was just not old enough to be in those spaces. So yeah, take what you will from this conversation. Um, from Take what you will from this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want me to talk about this more in detail with certain parts, um, you can leave a comment below and don't forget to like, share. And subscribe for more videos like this because I honestly just enjoy honest conversations about living because this is how we learn and this is how we do better so we stop repeating generational cycles um so I hope you enjoyed watching this video catch you in my next video and don't forget to be the bad girl that you are <laughs> bye